So the next talk in, of the morning sessions is by Professor Makoto Tsubota from Osaka Metropolitan University of Japan. We will talk about numerical studies of quantum hydrodynamics and turbulence. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this wonderful uh, discussion meeting. I'm Makoto Tsubota from Japan. I'm talking about uh, uh, numerical studies of quantum hydrodynamics and the turbulence. Our group studies both uh, superfluid helium and the atomic Bose-Einstein condensates. But uh, today uh, I'm talking about the topics of atomic BECs, especially the observation of the energy cascade and the uh, imagined isotropy of a wave turbulent cascade. And the last topic is a rotating quantum turbulence. So uh, what is quantum turbulence? Quantum turbulence means uh, turbulence in quantum condensed fluids. The main stages of quantum turbulence are, are superfluid helium since 1950s, and the other is atomic Bose-Einstein condensates, BCs, since 1995. So first of all, I'd like to show the what Bose-Einstein condensates, BCs. It's a uh, quite interesting movie. So let's consider the ideal atomic gas. Relatively high temperatures, these uh, atoms or particles move like uh, uh, particles. Atoms move like uh, particles. But the temperature is reduced. Of course, the kinetic energy is reduced, and the motion becomes slow. And uh, the thermal Doppler length increases. And uh, below the, some critical temperatures, these guys making, making a coherent uh, matter waves. So oh, this is this is a Bose-Einstein condensation, which was predicted by Bose uh, Albert Einstein, 1925, and uh, but realized in cold atoms in 1995. And uh, this is a, a macroscopic wave function psi. So oh, BEC in dilute atomic gases were realized in 1995, and by using the uh, laser optical optical laser cooling techniques. So the, the point is that uh, this BEC is focused, localized at the, the, some point at the focus of the laser. And the BEC is usually trapped by a harmonic potential. And uh, this is a famous observation by MIT by the time of flight. Uh, the temperature is reduced below the critical temperature. The BEC condensates grows, something like that. So uh, quantized vortex appears as a vortex of inviscid superflow in a BC. Any rotational motion in a superfluid is sustained by quantized forces. So the, uh, the quantized forces have some characteristics different from the usual forces. First, the circulation is quantized by this quantum circulation copper. And uh, a vortex of the quantum number larger than two is unstable. So actually, every vortex has exactly the same circulation. Secondly, this is a vortex of inviscid superflow being free from the usual decay mechanism of the viscous definition of the vortex T. So the, this vortex is very, very stable once it's nucleated. Third, the vortex core size is very small, the order of uh, coherence length. So this is vortex is very, very thin object. So this is a typical quantum turbulence. This is a numerical simulation of a gross Pitarski model. And uh, these uh, blue lines show the uh, motion of a vortex quad. So we have two models available for numerical studies of quantum turbulence. One is the famous gross Pitarski model, which is a nonlinear Schrodinger equation. This, is, uh, this model is used for atomic species. The other is a vortex filament model based on the Biosaba law. So this uh, model is used for superfluid helium. So uh, this is only result in the superfluid helium I show in, in this talk of mine. So this is a, a thermal counterflow in superfluid helium. The, uh, this is a fully coupled dynamics of two fluids in a channel. The white line shows the uh, motion of quantized forces by the Biosaba law. And we solved uh, simultaneously the Navier-Stokes equation. 
and the uh, red uh, blue parts show the motion of uh, uh, normal fluid. And uh, uh, this is also the uh, 3D simulation in a BEC turbulence in a cylindrical box potential. So uh, such kind of box potential was realized by uh, Cambridge group uh, near Nabo and uh, Zoran Hazabic groups. So I'm talking, uh, uh, talking uh, discussing this problem in detail in this talk of mine. So uh, you are a specialist of the uh, turbulence, so you don't need a detailed explanation for this part. And uh, so uh, the inertial range, the column flow is believed to be sustained by such kind of Richardson cascade process. However, my most textbooks or monograph describes the, this kind of Richardson cascade process, probably, but you know, this is only a cartoon and uh, nobody has ever confirmed it clearly. One of the reasons is that uh, it is not so easy to identify each eddy in a fluid. Of course, you can remind of the famous sketch by Leonardo da Vinci. The da Vinci sketch seems to say the uh, uh, flow comes from the duct, and the first they make uh, such kind of large eddies, and the small eddies are uh, split from the large eddies. But uh, my, my, probably this is uh, just only a cartoon. So here we direct like to compare classical turbulence and the quantum turbulence. So oh, this is a, uh, some uh, visualization of uh, classical turbulence. And uh, uh, in this case, the vortices are unstable, not easy to identify each vortex. And uh, you can define the circulation, but the circulation differs from one to another, not constant, continuously. However, in the case of quantum turbulence, quantum, uh, quantized vortices are stable to political defects. And every vortex has uh, exactly the same circulation, and the circulation is conserved. So, if the elements of turbulence is uh, vortices or eddies, the the elements are uh, well better defined in quantum turbulence than in classical turbulence. So, this is uh, one of the important advantage of studying uh, quantum turbulence. So, how to characterize fully developed quantum turbulence? Well, of course. Statistical laws in the statistical study, such as uh, Kolomov flow or Kolomov Zahar flow, uh, must be very, very important. In the viewpoint of the uh, far from equilibrium state, so for example, universality near non thermal fixed point may be very, very important, dynamical scaling or universal class. So, uh, so starting from the, some initial conditions, the system goes through a non thermal fixed point, it should show the, some universalities. And uh, this uh, concept in uh, quantum fluids uh, has been developed in these days, Thomas Gassinger's uh, Heidelberg group. And recently, there are not so many, but several works appear about the dynamic scaling of our university class for the, in, in uh, atomic species. So this is a typical uh, picture from the Thomas Gassinger's papers. So uh, this is uh, uh, how the uh, distribution, the momentum distribution, for example, this is, this is of, of course, cartoon. This is an initial configuration distribution. And after quench, the uh, 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 configuration uh, develops to something like that. And depending, depending on the, some conditions, the reference time may be different. But the point is the uh, development of the uh, distribution should obey such kind of dynamic scaling law. So uh, I'm talking about the quantum turbulence in atomic species. So uh, various kinds of quantum turbulence in atomic species. For example, we can control the system from two dimensional to three dimensional and the single component or multi component species, including spinor species or spiel with the coupling. So uh, there are various kinds of performance of turbulence. Of course, vortex or wave or spin or their mixture. So uh, immediately after the uh, uh, cold atom species, most efforts were devoted to uh, vortex lattices under the rotation. And uh, this is a, a gross test simulation. So when we rotate the system, the vortices uh, enter the condensate from the surface and uh, eventually forming a vortex lattices like this. And uh, uh, this is a... <coughs> Uh, this behavior is consistent with a uh, uh, long time ago, the Paris group's experiments. But uh, after that, uh, uh, 
then how to make a quantum turbulence in cold atoms? So cold, as I told you before, cold atoms are trapped by a harmonic potential. So it's not, a, it's not impossible to flow the cold atoms like a channel flows, like a recited in superfluid heating. So several methods are, are proposed to, quantum to create quantum tolerance atomic pieces. For example, one of the phase printing or manipulating the trapping potential or starting the condensator. And uh, here I'd like to uh, this, uh, introduce uh, this method. So our method is something like that. Uh, <clears throat> making quantum turbulence by combining two rotations. First, we trap the BC in a weakly elliptic potential. Then we rotate the system first around the X axis and the next around the Z axis. So two, this is uh, combining uh, two rotations. Actually, this method was uh, used for uh, in, in already in a classical turbulence for water by the Kyoto University the Shigeo Kidas group. This, this is quite interesting. So this will be quite interesting. So water is combined, combined in a cell. And this cell rotates around the horizontal axis and the whole apparatus on the rotating table. Could you understand? So the, this water subjected to the two rotations, two perpendicular rotations. And the, these scientists injected uh, tracer particles into the water. And uh, in the case of rotation around one axis, of course, uh, the flow shows a solid body rotation as, a, as, as a reasonable. And uh, in the case of a uh, rotation around two axis, the, they make turbulence like that. And uh, so uh, we applied this method to the cold atoms. This is our simulation by the gross telescope model under the two rotations. So, this is a condensed density. This is a quantized process. And we calculate the uh, uh, energy spectrum of the incompressive kinetic energy. And uh, so the inertial range is very narrow, but this is not my responsibility. This is a system. So, uh, so in, in this case, the, we obtained a, a, a spectrum 1.78, which is different from five over three, but it's okay. Because our system is something like that. Our system is neither isotropic nor homogeneous. So the uh, exponent may be different from five over three. The point is that we obtained such kind of power law spectrum. Yes. Yes, uh, uh, in this case, actually, uh, we injected the uh, dissipation in the small scale. And we excite the system. So this is, a, a, of course, a, a statistical steady state. Yes. Ah, Coromoran constant, you, you mean talk about she? Yes. She, she is, uh, of course, just different. Yes, usual, different from the usual case. So after, uh, after uh, our suggestions, the several uh, experimental group uh, try to make the quantum turbulence in BEC. This is a famous uh, uh, experiment by the Brazilian group, Bandere Bagnatas group. Uh, this is a three dimensional turbulence. The, these, uh, the, these black shadows show, seems to show the quantum turbulence, uh, quantized forces. And uh, this is a, a two dimensional turbulence. This is a United States group, and this is a South Korea's group. Uh, they make the uh, quantized forces, something like that. But, but after these scientists show this paper, the, this, this results were severely criticized by the fluid, fluid science community. So, so certainly these, these observations show the random configuration of our bolses, but uh, the, you know, the number of bolses is very, very small. For example, in this case, the probably the number of bolses are 30 or 40. So, the, the fluid scientist asked, is this genuine turbulence? <laughs> is this a, just a random configuration of a process? <laughs> so in order to show that this is a turbulence, it's important to show the uh, statistical law, right? But uh, uh, the, the several scientists uh, ob try to observe the statistical law in this case. But as I told you before, the, these BCs are trapped by a harmonic potential. So originally it was inhomogeneous. So it was not so easy to uh, observe the uh, statistical law directly. However, 
important breakthrough occurred by the Cambridge group. So the uh, group of the Zoran Hazbabic group succeeded in making the BC in a box potential. In a box potential, the BC is uh, almost uniform. So uh, by using this method, the, uh, these scientists uh, try, uh, making the homogeneous turbulence and observing energy cascade of turbulence. I'm talking about uh, these topics. So uh, this is a, a cascade in the K space. Uh, K space is a cascade in something like that. And uh, in the uh, real space, of course, this is a cartoon, but uh, something like that. And uh, <clears throat> the energy flux cascade was observed in atomic BCs, probably for the first time. It's very interesting. So uh, this nature's papers, the, these scientists making the uh, turbulence in a cylindrical box potential, and they observed the momentum distribution by time of flight experiments. And uh, uh, this is experiments, and uh, uh, they made a uh, simultaneously the gross test simulation and they obtained uh, uh, something like that, consistent with the uh, experimental results. So uh, I'd like to show the uh, propagation of a cascade. So uh, this is our numerical simulation. This is a two-dimensional gross test simulation. And the situation is just different from the Cambridge cases, but um, the essence is similar. So first we up, uh, inject the energy in the relatively large scales. So in the large scales, the early stage is something like that. But uh, in the late stage, it's something like that. You can find the structure becomes very fine. And uh, uh, we calculate, uh, uh, for example, correlation function, the energy spectrum. At the beginning, something like that. But uh, as the time develops, the cascade of fronts uh, propagates to the higher wave numbers and they go into the, some statistical steady state, something like that. This is a, a propagation of the cascade of fronts. This is 2D. This simulation is 2D. Pardon? Ah, this is a, a particle density spectrum. Particle density spectrum. So after that, uh, our group, uh, Cambridge group, observed the turbulent cascade in a BEC. So cascade from the propagates, something like that. So this is, I like this idea is very much, I, I'll explain. So how to excite the turbulence? The uh, Cambridge group, uh, the, the BEC is trapped by a cylindrical box potential. And they uh, oscillate the system, something like that. They, then, so, so the potential is moving like that. Like that. And they uh, inject the energy into the system. And uh, this is a very nice idea. So uh, the Cambridge group uh, succeeded in observing a cascade process by, cas uh, by observing the particle loss from the box potential. So initially, initially, the particles are trapped in a box potential. Of course, these, these particles are bosons and condenses, very, very low kinetic energy. They can't escape from the potential. However, if their kinetic energy exceeds the potential depth, in other words, if their kinetic energy exceeds this characteristic wave numbers, these guys are allowed to escape the potential. Is it, does it happen? Yes, it, it does. So uh, when the turbulence develops and the cascade fronts propagates to a higher wave number, and if the cascade fronts exceeds this critical value, these guys are allowed to escape from the potential. So, or something like that. And uh, the Cambridge group make the experiments for different uh, uh, potential depth, shallow case, middle case, and deep case. So you can find it easily. So cascade from the propagates to higher wave numbers. So uh, the potential dips, potential <laughs> becomes deep. It takes more time to, for cascade of front to reach the, this characteristic wave number. So the so number of the lost particles is, is delayed by the uh, potential dips, potential becomes deep. And uh, so uh, they, they, uh, they observed the loss rate and uh, these guys should have the, this kind of energy. So this is a uh, energy flux, cascade of energy flux. So they succeeded in uh, observing the energy flux in the cascade of, Turbulent cascade. It's, I, 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 like, I like this idea very, very much. But anyway, 
So uh, we performed the numerical simulation. So this is a gross spectral skew model. And uh, well, this is a box potential. This is oscillating potential. And uh, in order to mimic the Cambridge experiments, we in, uh, injected the uh, dissipation into the gross test model. So it, it, this dissipation is something like that. If the uh, particles comes to the uh, uh, com comes out of the potential, we, we remove the particles. So we are, uh, this is a detail of the case. So this is a, a 3D simulations of a BCs. So first, we uh, excite the system like this. So at the beginning, the uh, such kind of structures, relatively symmetric structures, structures appears. But uh, as time goes by, uh, relatively, uh, this structure becomes finer, 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 and finer. So to tell the truth, so at the beginning, a few quantized velocities appear. But uh, at the latest stage, this is a, a wave turbulence, not a vortex turbulence. So, in order, uh, depending on the excitations, the velocities are uh, uh, excited or wave, wave, waves are excited. So, uh, uh, we uh, calculate the uh, uh, simulation uh, number of the lost particles. This is the experiments. This is our uh, numerical simulations. So, the uh, Agreements are uh, qualitatively more or less good. And the uh, uh, next step, we uh, focus on the anisotropy of turbulence. In the, uh, this nature's papers, the Cambridge group observed anisotropy of the turbulence. So time over time over flight experiments. At the beginning, they, uh, the, this is a distribution of the particle. So at the beginning, of course, uh, trapped by a cylindrical box potential, the uh, distribution is anisotropic between minus pi and pi. But as the turbulence develops, uh, that after the turbulence develops, the part distribution becomes almost uniform. So it means uh, uh, after the turbulence develops, the distribution becomes isotropic. So the, uh, the Cambridge group excited uh, 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 observed some anisotropic parameter. So, so the excitation amplitude is relatively small. The system becomes anisotropic. But the, if the excitation exceeds some critical value, the system should be isotropic. Uh, in this nature's paper, Cambridge group just showed the results. The, there are no explanations. But we try to uh, uh, understand this problem. So our motivation that the anisotropy depends on the excitation. Is this the transition to turbulence or not? This is our motivation. So actually, this topic reminds us of, of some interesting topics. So restoration of a symmetry in turbulence. So when the uh, Reynolds number is relatively small, probably, uh, so the downstream is upstream is uh, symmetry breaking, of course, uh, emitting the, uh, such kind of karma vortex streets. But as the Reynolds number uh, uh, increases and the, the becomes turbulent, for example, the behind of the grid turbulence, the, in this situation, the rotational symmetry and the transcendental symmetry is recovered. This story is described in the Frisch's book. So we try to confirm these topics. So this is a very interesting one. So this is a gross Petsky simulation. This is a real space. This is a wave number space. Let's go. So at the beginning, the, uh, of course, the, this is uh, anisotropic, but uh, uh, gradually, the uh, uh, distribution propagates to the higher wave number. This means the propagation of the uh, cascade front and the distribution becomes an isotropic like this. So this is a, a time development. At the beginning, something like that. As the time goes by, the uh, system becomes a uh, wave turbulence, of course, wave turbulence. The uh, distribution becomes isotropic, expanding to the higher wave number. So th this is the same, same, same simulation. This is a cross section of the real space and the wave number space. In the uh, real space, something like that. Wave number space, the uh, distribution becomes isotropic and expanding to the higher wave numbers. So, so we know the time development of NK uh, distribution, something like that. The NK seems to propagate higher wave numbers in the cascade. So, so something like that. 
So uh, at about, uh, in this case, 90, the cascade front reaches to the KD, where the uh, dissipation works. So uh, after that, the system goes to the statistical steady state. It, it, it's OK. But uh, how does the anisotropy develop? How does the turbulence restore the isotropic symmetry? So we try to uh, uh, char characterize the anisotropy in the K, K space. This, this part is, uh, I'm sorry, just complicated. So we know NKT distribution on the wave number space. We define QKT something like that. So if NKT is completely isotropic at K, the QKT should be unity. So uh, we introduced the measuring showing the, how the distribution deviates from isotropy. Sorry, just complicated this. So point is, if, uh, if system is anisotropic, AKT should be unity, isotropic. AKT sh uh, should vanish. And uh, uh, we show the Moroade plot in the wave number space. And the, and the point is, the uh, anisotropy or isotropy depends on the wave number. So relatively low wave, um, this is the initial state. So uh, K equal unity and the, about near KD, this dissipation scale, the uh, uh, distribution, both distributions are anisotropic. However, the turbulent develops and the uh, turbulent developed, the uh, relatively low wave number still anisotropic, but uh, uh, high wave numbers are almost isotropic. So the distribution at high K becomes isotropic, forgetting the memory of low K. It's a very important point. In the low case, so the system is, uh, of course, trapping by the uh, cylindrical box potential and excite, excited by the, some such kind of potential. But uh, as the turbulent develops, and the high wave numbers, these guys forget the memory of the low K and they become the tower. This is a, a restoration of the uh, uh, isotropic symmetry in the turbulence. So oh, we calculated the, the, some uh, characteristic parameter like this. This is a, a Cambridge observation. This is our simulation. Well, the, the agreement is not so good, but, but something like that. So the last topic is uh, rotating turbulence. So in a classical cases, rotating turbulence is studied by, by many authors. So this is a, a, a t equal zero. This is isotropic turbulence. The energy spectrum is of course isotropic, but the rotation is applied. The, uh, the, these guys, the system likes to make the, some structure along the rotation axis and the uh, energy spectrum becomes anisotropic. So uh, now I'm talking about the rotating quantum turbulence. The motivation is a uh, competition between the rotation and the turbulence. In the uh, rotation uh, likes to anisotropy and the uh, turbulence likes, likes uh, of, of course, isotropy as uh, I discussed. So uh, in the superfluidic helium, uh, a long time ago, uh, Dosser is, uh, Russell Donnelly's group made uh, some pioneering experiments. After that, we made some contribution. And the uh, atomic species uh, recently, uh, uh, Mark Brushes and our chair, Matt group, made a nice work, decaying quantum towers, trapped in infinitely long potential. And now we have studied a uh, statistical steady state trapped in uh, isotropic harmonic potential. So this is our old works. So, uh, First, we uh, rotate. This is a, a not gross Plesky, but the vortex experimental simulation. In the uh, in the rotation, the, of course, the vortices form a vortex lattices like this. Then we apply a uh, flow around this direction. The, then the, these vortices are disturbed and uh, coming to the such kind of uh, 3D turbulence. So this is a 2D. This is a 3D. So the, our interest is uh, the something like that. Our interest is a competition between the rotation and the turbulence, and the probably we can uh, consider the crossover between 2D turbulence and the 3D turbulence. So uh, this is a, uh, our, our simulation, 3D gross task model. And uh, uh, a weekly elliptic harmonic potential, then uh, we force a random forcing. So this is just complicated. We, we solve the gross task model in the wave number space. And we are uh, uh, making the forcing at a relatively high wave number. Then uh, we uh, introduce a dissipation, uh, which works only in the uh, relatively small scales. 
small scale, uh, less than the coherence length. Yes, and uh, this is a uh, uh, first we initial stated uh, six vortex ring, uh, uh, six vortex, uh, uh, sorry, uh, seven, seven, seven vortex lines along the rotation axis, something like that. And uh, turning on the random forcing and the uh, wave number is, uh, wave turbulence is excited. So this is a simulation. So oh, oh, they are disturbed and uh, uh, some, uh, just difficult to see, but the wave, wave turbulence is excited here. So oh, this is a, a, a study, steady state. We calculate the kinetic energy. The, the, this is a, a incompressive kinetic energy. This is a quantum energy, and this is a compressive kinetic energy. In our cases, the vortex lattices uh, remained. So the incompressive kinetic energy, uh, oh, sorry, doesn't, doesn't decrease so much. However, uh, compressive kinetic energy certainly increases which um, shows the uh, excitation of a wave, uh, wave turbulence. So oh, this is a uh, anisotropy for energy distribution. This is a kinetic energy, incompressive kinetic energy and the uh, compressive kinetic energy spectrum. And the uh, KR, uh, KZ is a rotation axis. So at the initial, of course, the, these guys are anisotropic because uh, we have a uh, uh, seven vortex lines along the rotation axis. But uh, after in the steady state, so the kinetic energy and the import compressive kinetic energy stay still uh, anisotropic, but uh, uh, the compressive kinetic energy seems to become uh, isotropic. So oh, oh, we used the anisotropic parameter we used in the previous paper, and we calculate the uh, anisotropy on the case. The point is, and, and the relatively low wave numbers, the uh, turbulence is of course anisotropic. But the high wave numbers, the, again, the, this turbulence uh, forgets the memory of the low wave number and the, uh, and, uh, the turbulence becomes isotropic. So oh, probably, yeah. So let me summarize, let me make summarize. We discussed the novel results of quantum turbulence, atomic pieces. So we discussed the observing of the cascade flux and the restoration of isotropy and the rotating quantum turbulence. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, we have time for questions. So this, uh, your particle spectrum, minus 3.5, uh, is it connected with Kolmogorov in some sense? No. Energy spectrum, how, uh, so we need frequency as well, right? Uh, so how do you connect NK to the energy spectrum and is it connected to Kolmogorov? Ha ha. Uh, be, be, uh, we calculate the uh, particle spectrum, right? If you multiply the kind of energy, it becomes a Kolmogorov spectrum. Yes. Basically, something like that. Hello. So uh, thank you for the talk. Even with strong rotation, you do not observe an inverse energy cascade, right? You, uh -huh. don't, you don't see an, anything to large scales. Yes, of course. If you make the very, very strong rotation, we, we should have the inverse energy cascade. But you, you uh, see? You, you need to try? No, no. Our, our case is not so strong. Okay, but, but do you know if you increase the rotation, you see the inverse yes, cascade? Yes, in principle, it's possible. I have a question, yeah. It's a, here, here. It's a similar to the, this question. So you showed this two perpendicular rotations to generate turbulence. So what if you have rotation along only one axis and you keep increasing this omega? So do we get turbulence in vortices? Uh, uh, please say again, <laughs> I couldn't get so it. You have this two perpendicular rotations uh, to generate uh -huh. turbulence. Uh -huh. So I what if we have only rotation along one axis yes. and you keep increasing the rotation rate? Yes. Do we get turbulence in that state? Yes. Uh, we've never done such kind of simulation, but if we, we rotate around the only the one axis. And we cross some omega C critical. Yes. In this case, of course, uh, turbulence is, uh, turbulence is uh, remains, but uh, the turbulence changes from the three dimensional to the two dimensional. And uh, of course, depending on the rotational frequencies, quantized forces appear. Okay. Quantized vortices forming a vortex lattices. 
ഓക്കെ താങ്ക് യു സർ സർ ഇൻ ദ ലാസ്റ്റ് ജി പി ക്വേഷൻ യു ഷോഡ് ദ ഡിസിപ്ലേഷൻ ഡിപെൻഡ്സ് ഓൺ ദ വാല്യൂ ഓഫ് ആർട്ട് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് സംഹൗ കണക്റ്റഡ് ടു ദ സ്മോൾ സ്കിൽ ഡിസിപ്ലേഷൻ സർ ഇൻ ദ ലാസ്റ്റ് ജി പി ദാറ്റ് യു ഷോഡ് യു ഹാഡ് ദ ഗാമ ഡിപെൻഡൻസ് ഓൺ ആർട്ട് ഇൻസ്റ്റെഡ് ഓഫ് കെ ഓപ്പൺ ദാറ്റ് സ്ലൈഡ് സർ ദാറ്റ് ഗാമ ദ ലാസ്റ്റ് ജി പി ക്വേഷൻ ദാറ്റ് യു ഷോഡ് ഹാ Yeah, sorry, I, I'm going to catch up on it. <laughs> okay, uh, so can you open the GP equation, gross price equation? Yes. In, in a previous slide. Just a moment. Yes, sir, this one. So, gamma is dependent on R here. Yes, here. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes. But you mentioned that you're dissipating at small scales. Yes. So, it should be dependent on K. Is that uh, connected to this gamma? Ha, ha, ha. How do you take care of that? In, in this case, uh, we injected the small scale dissipation. And, of course, uh, uh, it affects strongly the turbulent state. Yes. what i mean to ask is, is uh, can you so what is the gamma r there like how do you decide what gamma r is or you just uh, calculating that in k space and that has a similar form in r mm uh i want to say what to say so because uh, once you, once the particles go very close to the boundary walls yes. they will escape from the boundary won't they in, in this uh-huh. particular case uh-huh. yeah, yes uh yes it mm at this situation is just different from the case of a cambridge simulations yeah okay okay so okay. thank this, you this this patient is a difference okay i have a question so you you have isotropic dissipation right yes so yes. have you tried changing the dissipate the dissipation length scale to see if it has an impact on the isotropization at small scales ha <laughs> ha i've never thought of it <laughs> but mom it may be pre- uh, possible in principle it may be interesting i've never done that so i have a question uh, continuous uh, to the uh, question came from the back so so you told that this uh, rotation uh, along two axis makes the system 3d to 2d so what happens to the energy transfer and does it have specifics to only quantum uh, system or is it applicable to classical systems also probably yeah thank, thank you very much for the questions so of course this characteristic is not characteristic of this property is not characteristic of quantum turbulence it's applicable to the classical turbulence too so yeah okay when the system becomes a quasi 2d say when you have rotation along two axis so uh, uh, does it uh, direction of uh, cascading changes yes of course it does it, it, it so does. It, uh, this is a, a rotation along one direction that is you have a homogeneous isotropic turbulence but uh-huh. if you have a, a rotation along two directions then the direction of energy cascade changes right yes i think so but i have never investigated it Okay, let's thank the speaker once again.